Hi. My kids take Taekwondo lessons every week. Recently, my daughter decided to drop out after training for several years and achieving her blue belt. Her reason? There were no girls left in the class. And my son? Well, he's now a black belt. When I think about this, you know, I think about Angelina sparring. She's nine years old. Sparring with the boys isn't something that she wants to do. But a black belt, a black belt needs to spar. As a woman in tech, I'm used to sparring with the boys. <laughs> but I've realised that sparring isn't something that a lot of women actually like to do. To change the game in my industry, to actually encourage more women and create cultures where women can thrive, I need to make tech more attractive to more women. I don't want to be the only girl left in the class either. I never actually planned on a career in tech, but growing up, I was really good at maths and science, like prize-winning good. I assumed that my ease with math and science had come from my father, but I'd find out years later that my mother, a Hong, that she was actually um, a runner-up for Miss Hong Kong, a Miss Hong Kong finalist, was also one of the first computer operators at the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. Mum was always better than Dad at both math and money. I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really should have known. <laughs> so, growing up, um, I never actually considered computer science. You know, that was the domain of geeky guys like my brothers and their Dungeons and Dragons playing friends. Instead, I chose geology. So, the, my role models back then were my parents' friends, oil men. I figured I'd join an oil company, see the world. But what I didn't realise is that women weren't allowed on rigs in the 1980s. So someone told me that a female geologist could get on a rig. That was it for me. Career decision made. My career in science, though, ended up being extremely short-lived. There were no jobs for geologists when I graduated. So I ended up joining um, BP in the advertising department instead, and I never set foot on a rig. After spending most of my 20s in sales and marketing roles, in 1999, I joined a friend's internet startup. That's my friend Sue on the screen. She went from a drag racer to a tech entrepreneur, and her company built web apps. Today, I think it's funny that my kids can tell me what an app is, but back then, most of my friends were completely mystified by apps and the internet. I stopped telling people what I did for a living for fear of being everybody's help desk. <laughs> so. I don't want to be everyone's help desk, but I do love my new industry. I embraced my new industry and I quickly became tech savvy. My understanding of science helped me to assimilate new concepts, and my experience in business taught me how to be both commercial and creative. And I soon realised that I was pretty good at this internet stuff. Today, though, I'm constantly reminded that women are underrepresented in my industry by a factor of one in four. At times, I realise that I'm the only woman left in the room. That's been my every day for the past 17 years. While boys and girls graduate from high school in math science majors in roughly equal numbers, in the US today, only 18% of computer science graduates are women. We, we really need to change what's actually happening in tech. We need to make sure that we're encouraging our girls to actually pursue careers in tech. We need to give tech a makeover. Right. To give tech a makeover, there are three things that we need to do. The first one, we need to encourage our young girls to code. We need to basically encourage young women to study tech. And we also need to encourage women mid-career to be in tech. Now, we all know tech is really cool for kids, but for some reason, teenage girls grow cold on the idea of studying tech. They think tech is boring. My kids use tech every day to study, share videos, stay in touch with their friends. I read somewhere that online gaming is actually a great way to encourage a love of technology, so I bankroll their online gaming habits. <laughs> My son, at nine, built his first mobile app. One day, I might convince my daughter Angelina to try coding with First Code Academy or Girls Who Code, but right now, it's a case of, I'll code if my friends code. Her friends are already on Instagram. 
women rule social media. We dominate Facebook, Pinterest and Instagram. And according to Forbes, stand click to click with the men on Twitter and Tumblr. So why can't we encourage more girls to actually study tech? Is it a lack of encouragement or a lack of role models that cools their interest? We simply can't allow our girls to be left behind. We need to encourage their creativity and curiosity. We need to encourage them to build the sort of products that they would want to use. And ultimately, through technology, they can make this world a better and more inclusive place. Tech is cool. We need role models, <laughs> not stereotypes. <laughs> I watched the entire first series of Silicon Valley. Considering I worked for Google, I thought I'd pick up some Silicon Valley survival tips. It's a parody about a fictional startup called Pied Piper. I, I watched it and it made me giggle, but I couldn't help noticing that the only female characters were an assistant, a love interest, and a stripper. <laughs> I watched the series twice, wondering if I'd missed a leading female character. I didn't. There weren't any. The second series of the show began airing in the US last month, and I'm pleased to report that the show's gender balance is actually changing for the better. Many women, had, many women actually many men and women, had used social media to ask about the lack of women in the show. And the writers listened. Google is now working with the Gina Davis Institute to actually change the representation of girl coders in the media. As Gina Davis says, if you can't see it, you can't be it. So changing the representation of girls, girl coders in the media can actually do for computer science what CSI has done for forensic science. It's one of those things, if we want to actually change our, the representation and not have this kind of stereotype, we need to have positive portrayals of girls in the media as well. So, I fast forward to today. I'm a woman who's actually joined tech in the mid-career. Everyone's probably heard of the glass ceiling, right? Have you heard about the tech trapdoor? <laughs> so the tech trapdoor is real. Women in their 30s fall through this trapdoor and drop out of tech at an alarming rate. Some pursue other career paths, some leave to have children, some just go and start their own businesses where they can create their own culture. My industry has a fast-paced, competitive culture that doesn't suit everyone at every stage of their life. But what we need to do, we need to actually change that. We need to attract more women from other industries so we can actually create those cultures where women can thrive. The way I look at it, if a drag racer can found an internet startup, right, and a geologist can advise on digital strategy, it should be a piece of cake to actually get other women to join my industry. Since joining Google, I've met dozens of inspiring women. Some actually started their careers in tech, others joined mid-career with strong business pedigrees. Throughout my career, I've been fortunate enough to work with women coders, designers and entrepreneurs. These women are my role models. At every career crossroad, they reinforce my decision to pursue my black belt in tech. And hopefully one day, my daughter might actually achieve her black belt too. So let's encourage our girls to actually code. Let's encourage young women to study tech. Let's attract mid-career women to be in tech. Let's create cultures where women can thrive. Let's give tech a makeover. <laughs>